example between the two. All right, so in order to settle the issue of materiality, we have to look also at these other notions of math. Um, let's look at the very famous uh, passage from a letter to the Volder of uh, 1703, which Leibniz gives uh, a wonderfully crisp uh, account of his ontology. Uh, you have that on your handout. Uh, I distinguish therefore one, the primitive entity of soul to matter, i.e. primary matter, or primitive passive power. Three, the monad completed by these two. Four, the mass or secondary matter, or organic machine for which countless subordinate monads come together. Five, the animal or corporeal substance, which is made one by the monad. is uh, basically an aggregate of monads. Uh, what makes it uh, into a corporeal substance as opposed to simply an aggregate is the presence uh, of a dominating monad. In any case, uh, um, just to... So I... Kind of matter we find in monads uh, and which like it's a complete it says uh, it uh, completes a uh, monad namely primary matter so we have uh, already heard about that uh, this morning and i think what we will uh, see in Leibniz uh, is an example i think a very striking example of what the jobs was uh, mentioning uh, this uh, morning so pulling apart the things that uh, in the contemporary uh, understanding uh, together. So what is the notion of primary matter in Leibniz? At the end of his illuminated discussion of Leibniz's notion of primary matter, Robert Adams uh, raises, uh, a, I quote, a subtle question to which he suspects uh, Leibniz himself uh, did not attend carefully. The question is, uh, I quote, is primary matter a positive constituent of a substance, something which must be added to a substantial form to constitute a complete substance, as this passage from the Boulder seems <coughs> prima facie to indicate, or is it simply the set of limitations characteristic of a particular substantial form, and those merely the expression of something that has not been added uh, or included uh, in the form, unquote. I will argue that Leibniz considered answer in his mature metaphysics uh, would be that matter, primary matter, is not a positive uh, ontological constituent <coughs> of the monad. <coughs> to be sure, Leibniz is less than explicit on this point, and in many tests, he writes as if uh, primary matter was a positive ontological constituent. It seems to me, however, that the view most in keeping with, his, with the trust of his mature ontology is that uh, is the view captured by a striking remark of 1695, which I have put on your handout, materia reum est nihilum id est limitatio. The matter of things is nothing uh, that is a limitation. It seems to me that this becomes uh, particularly clear in uh, tests uh, in which Leibniz uh, is uh, um, speaking about a uh, creaturity limitation, the limitation of creatures, qua creatures, uh, and uh, um, in the way in which he links a uh, primary matter to that. Okay, so I will try now to make uh, this case and take some uh, objections uh, which can be presented. In the specific dynamic of 1695, Leibniz writes, I quote, that the primitive force of being acted upon, this primitive paziendi, or of resisting, constitutes that which is called primary matter in the schools, if correctly interpreted. Now, as we were already um, discussing this morning in Elena's paper, 
uh, it's not that there is a one conception of matter in the schools, uh, quite the opposite, but there are uh, very significant disagreements. Uh, so, which one of these Leibniz things uh, is the correct way of seeing primary matter? And here is, uh, as it appears to me, what is my interpretation. It seems to me, uh, and then I will try to defend that this interpretation, it seems to me that uh, Leibniz is certainly closer to Aquinas' view that matter is pure potentiality and as such cannot exist without one form or another inherent in it, then to the later scholastics who see matter as a positive ontological principle with some actuality of its own and capable of existing without any substantial form inherent in it, at least as a metaphysical possibility. It's not what happens naturally, but Suarez says that quite clearly that it would be metaphysical. pure potentiality. And as Scott has pointed out, this does not recoil from such conclusion, and I dare deny that primary matter is pure potentiality, as uh, Scottos and Ockham had done, they said that it has uh, some uh, order, on the other hand, uh, denied that pure potentiality is mere non-being, uh, as uh, Aquinas had done uh, on the divide. The third position uh, is in line with the conclusion that the primary matter, being a pure potentiality, is a non being. In short, in my view, despite the Aristotelian way um, in which Leibniz puts this uh, account, it seems to be that Leibniz moves away from the Aristotelian framework of primary substances as composed of two positive ontological constituents form and matter, of which matter is uh, the ultimate subject of inherence, uh, toward a more frank, towards a more frankly neoplatonic uh, and uh, more specifically Plotinian uh, understanding uh, of matter in which matter is uh, ultimately non-being. And it seems to me that uh, this uh, Primary matter, passivity, and bodies, resistance, and inertia. As uh, we have already seen in the quotation from uh, the Volder, from the letter to the Volder, Leibniz identifies primary matter with the passive power of a substance. This identification <coughs> between a primary matter with the passive power of a substance of the primitive passive form a uh, passive force uh, which we find in the substance comes across uh, in uh, a number of passivity. That is uh, all that primary matter is. When I said that primary matter is that which is merely passive, uh, and separated from source and forms, I said the same thing twice. That is, it is just as if I had said that it is merely passive and separated from all activity." Unquote. In other tests, Leibniz goes a step further and asserts that from primary matter, conceived as passivity or primitive passive power, or primitive force of
The body does not allow itself to be penetrated and rather gives way to another, but that it does not give way without difficulty and without weakening the total motion of the one that pushes it. Thus, it can be said that matter in itself, beyond the extension, includes primitive passive power. And then goes on speaking about uh, active power. So uh, it seems to me that uh, what Leibniz is saying in these tests, and you have another one in your handout, uh, is uh, that uh, the primary matter we find in uh, simple substances uh, or the primitive uh, passive power is uh, what uh, ground, uh, ground uh, derivative features 